property, what they should do with their money, it's their business. But this is not my work, this is not Isha Foundation's work, this is a generational work. As a generation of people, will we do this or not is the only question. In many ways, if we don't do it, see right now, if we do the right things in the next ten to fifteen years' time, in a matter of twenty to twenty-five years, you will see a fantastic change. Because what I'm talking about is, this two hundred forty-two crore trees, if it comes up, by the time they are ten to twelve years of age, it will sequester something like nine to twelve trillion liters of water. Twelve trillion liters of water, to give you a context, the entire river flow, the, f the entire flow in the Kaveri River is twenty-one point two trillion liters. Twelve trillion liters means your wells will be full, your tanks will be full, your river will flow, all the one hundred and twenty rivers which are tributaries to Kaveri will flow and Kaveri will flow twelve months of the year. <coughs> My engagement with Kaveri was not as an environmentalist, I am not an environmentalist, let me be very clear, I am definitely not a scientist nor am I an activist. I just don't know how to forsake my humanity and just go on with my life. That's the only problem I have. <clears throat> I… I grew up around Kaveri and because I did not find anything very interesting happening in the school, I went to Kaveri more and more often. My engagement with Kaveri was just like how the worms and the insects and the tiny fish and the tadpoles were engaged with Kaveri. My engagement was just like that. I did not go there thinking I'm going to learn something, I did not go there thinking I'll do something. No, I was just engaged like every other tiny creature involved. In my experience, I did not see Kaveri as a water source. All I saw was she was a magnificent life, a mega life. I was a tiny little life out there and people like me and you come and go, but Kaveri has flown for millions of years. At such a mighty life, we have brought her to her knees today that she doesn't get to the ocean five months in a year and she's withdrawing between four to eight kilometers per year. I want you to calculate how long does it take before it stops entering Tamil Nadu for four or five months in a year. I want you to calculate the distance. If you want some help, I will tell you the entire length of Kaveri is 804 kilometers or six kilometers, okay? So 175 kilometers short, it stopped. From there, you… let's take the minimum four kilometers a year if it withdraws. In how many years Kaveri will not enter Tamil Nadu? If Kaveri does not enter Tamil Nadu at all, I think Kaveri Prachana is over. Yes? Problem is between you and me, between two people. The problem is not with the river. Hello? The river is not the problem. We are the problem. So as a part of this, many things will happen and uh, this should not become one evening everybody clap their hands and go away. Twelve years. Are you with me? Because this is what is lacking. You know, somebody insulted us, a very great man in the world he insulted us saying, we can't think fifteen minutes ahead. Will you prove him wrong? <laughs> Many of Albert Einstein's theories, brilliant as they are, have been proven wrong by other scientists. I want to prove this one statement absolutely wrong. Hello? <laughs> People of Coimbatore, I'm asking you, shall we prove him wrong? <laughs> we can think ahead decades ahead and execute what we want to execute. We are not that kind of people that we can't think fifteen minutes ahead. He met the wrong Indians. He didn't come to Coimbatore. <laughs> now as a part of this, many things will unfold. The next level, tomorrow, tomorrow at noon time, we have a meeting with the chief minister of Karnataka and his entire team. 
Most probably tomorrow evening the details of the decisions they take will be announced or in the next few days. So, uh, Karnataka government is full on and you see Tamil Nadu government is full on. Farmers are super enthusiastic, the governments willing to do and fulfill their responsibilities. Now it is the responsibility of the people to stand up and do what we can do, otherwise this won't happen. In our lives, if we do not do what we cannot do, it's not a problem. But if we do not do what we can do, we are a disastrous life. I am only talking about this, that you and me, our life should not be a disaster. We will do everything we can do. What we cannot do, what to do? What we cannot do, there is nothing to do. But what we can do, we must do in our lives, otherwise what's the point of being alive? So this is not an impossible project, 242 is not too big a number. Yes, if you try to plant along the streets, in your house, all over the place, it's a very big number. But do you know how many saplings of paddy farmers are planting in a year? Do you know? Nobody can count. It's in millions and millions of… like that, probably billions. So. Once it becomes an economic activity, it will multiply. What we need to do right now, I request uh, uh, Mr. Yeshwaran and uh, Velumani and all the others who are, have whatever kind of influence you have, this is all we need to do. We can start with Kongonado itself, that in every taluk, if we establish 250 to 500 farmers into agroforestry, Believe me, in five years' time you cannot stop it because by then everybody sees the economic benefit. After that you cannot stop it, not in Tamil Nadu, in the entire country, in the tropical world you cannot stop it. When I was at… last year we launched a, 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 a scheme called a decade of action for water with United Nations. I was… I'm part of that. And uh, when I spoke to the experts there and I said, see, this is what I'm planning to do and this will work. They looked at this entire plan and they said, Sadhguru, this is fantastic, this must be done. Then I said, are you with me? They said, no, no, the way our institutions work is, first we must have a demonstrable model. I said, I can show you, show you a thousand demonstrable models in nature. They said, no, no, not like that, you must do it. I said, what kind of thing is this? So now, Kaveri can become the demonstrable model. The sooner we do it, <clears throat> and this time when we were at the COP14 meeting in Delhi, just ninth and tenth of this month, the response that we are getting there is unbelievable. United Nations is not usually given to emotions and enthusiasm like that. The kind of enthusiasm and the emotional way they responded to me, all the leaders of various organizations, was a big shock and a surprise for me. I didn't expect them to come on like that. They've all been closely watching Kaveri calling and uh, many tweets and other things are in the public domain but they're also conveying this to us in many different levels. The important thing is this, because it is an economic plan, it cannot fail. If you try to do ecology without involving economic aspects of it, it is bound to fail. It may not totally fail. See, we started project Green Hands. At that time I said we must tr plant 112 million trees. In eight years if you plant, six to eight years if you plant, in fifteen years time, desertification would have stopped. But uh, we went on, now it is already uh, fourteen years since we started that. We have planted some thirty-five million trees, but still it's not one hundred and twelve. But since then, from that day to now, the deterioration that's happened is extremely sharp. In the last twenty-five years, I've been watching with concern what's happening with Kaveri, but Particularly in the last seven to eight years, the drop is very, very steep. See, the scientific studies are saying the drop is forty-four percent. 
because they are taking even the monsoon flows. In my experience, I see if you take a mid-month, like let's say you take November, after five months after the monsoons are over, in my experience, Kaveri is only thirty percent of what she was fifty years ago. This is a commitment. I want to see Kaveri flows as she did fifty years ago when I saw the Kaveri, how it was. We must make sure our children will see Kaveri like that again. And it's possible to do this. When we launched this Rally for Rivers campaign, we did over fifty thousand art competitions across the country in various schools, fifty thousand schools. And many children, when they were asked to draw the… paint the picture of a river, they just painted brown sand because that's all they've seen. Maybe when they're going on a bridge, their parents would have said, look at the river and they saw only sand and they painted picture of sand. This… this is the imagery of future if we don't take care of this. With the kind of population pressure we have, if we want to live in this country, we must live sensibly. There is not enough space for foolishness. There is not room for stupidity. If you want to be stupid, there must be lot of space. When you are sitting close together, no room for stupid behavior, isn't it? Hello? We really packed. Well, we are nice but we are too many. Like uh, Biju Patnaik said, India is a great country, just too many bloody Indians. <laughs> That's his words, not me, <laughs> okay? So, right now our populations have reached a point where everything that we do, we need to think how we're doing it. It's very, very important. And we can… we can see this in our lifetime. We can see this in our lifetime, what transformation we can bring. If you do not understand what I'm telling you, you either… Uh, Valwan is here, uh, Santil is here, just visit their farms, you will see what prosperity is. People, every time a suicide happens, they're saying, oh, he couldn't pay bank loan, so he died. If there was fertile soil and abundant water, would a farmer commit suicide? I want to know. Hello? If there was fertile soil and abundant water, no matter what his financial situation, would he commit suicide? Definitely he would not. That's all we need to put back. There are enough studies to show if you increase, this I'm saying in Chantil's farm, if you increase the organic content in the soil by one percent, one acre of land can sequester sixty thousand liters of water. That's what it can do, just one percent increase in organic content. United Nations has fixed a standard that to call soil as soil, there must be two percent organic content. But my experience as a farmer and being engaged with land, I feel five to eight percent organic content is needed if you really want to grow anything that you wish to grow. But they are setting minimum as two percent. But today, the organic content on an average in Tamil soil is 0.68 percent. And in twelve percent of the land, it is 0.025 percent, that is almost a desert. In forty-two percent of the land, it is point-zero-five percent. This is where we are. If you want to put organic content back in the soil, there are only two ways – leaves from the trees and animal waste. We are also pushing for a law with the center that anybody who owns a hectare of land must have five bovine animals on the land. It's a must, otherwise you must be dispossessed of the land because you're killing the nation. You may think it's my land, it's not your land. You don't own the land, you're only a custodian for your lifetime. For a few years that you live here, you are a custodian of the land, you are not really the owner of the land. At the most you can get the privilege of being buried there. Yes? That is a privilege you can have because you make good manure. All of us make good manure. So that is a different matter, but we must have trees and animals on the land, otherwise